Hey guys, John with Performance Plus Tennis here. Are you struggling with or have you ever struggled with tennis elbow? In today's lesson, we're gonna talk a little bit about tennis elbow, what it is, and how to avoid it. And you know, I've been playing tennis for quite a number of years now. Way too many years, <laughs> it's crazy. But I've only had tennis elbow once, and that's when I really didn't understand what I was doing on my backhand. So I was taking a lot of the brunt of the impact of the ball on my, on my backhand side of my elbow, and I was playing with a wooden racket and my elbow got torn up a little bit. So, but in today's world, we see so many players still dealing with tennis elbow. And in some cases, because the rackets are stiffer, strings are maybe strung too tight, but oftentimes it boils down to technical flaws. And we're gonna get into what the technical flaws are and some corrective measures that you can implement right away that are gonna help you avoid the potential for getting a tennis elbow. So first of all, what is tennis elbow and how do we get it? How do we deal with it? Well, the most common tennis elbow we get is where we get the pain on the top of the arm here where the extensor muscles attach to the elbow region here, to the top of the forearm. And what happens is, is that when we're not playing correctly, we're, we're taking the brunt of the ball at impact and it's hitting us and it's breaking the form. And what happens is that puts a tremendous amount of stress on the muscles here. And of course, tendons attach muscles to bone. So in this particular case, it's tendinitis. And what happens is that tendon has a membrane around it's called a sheath. And that sheath starts to microscopically tear off the bone. And that's really the pain that you have. Very rarely is the tendon itself tearing off the bone, but instead it is this membrane or sheath that is tearing away. So the main cause of this tennis elbow is where we have the, the extensor muscles engaged and holding, but they don't overcome the ball. Instead, the ball overcomes the muscles and that causes the strain that transfers to the tendon and then the sheath or membrane on the tendon that starts to tear away from the bone. And all of a sudden, this gets so uncomfortable that for many of us, just turning keys of car or picking up a coffee mug becomes very, very uncomfortable. And it's all right in this region. And it's really caused by not having the correct technique in your swing and then using your arm and you've got this locked up and then it breaks and that starts to tear away. And you do that hundreds of times and you're just a you know, ticking time bomb for tennis elbow. And that's really where it originates. Mostly it's gonna occur on backhands, but it certainly can happen on serves as well, where this muscle is very active as you, as you play your service motion. So that's really what, this, what the tennis elbow is really all about, where, where it comes from. And now we're gonna get into solutions and how to avoid it going forward. So what if you have tennis elbow now, or you've had it in the past and you think you might get it again in the future, what can you do? Well, first of all, once you get that tennis elbow, it takes a long time to heal. And the reason is, is that there's not a lot of blood flow through tendons or certainly membranes. So it's gonna take a long time for this to heal. And typically what happens is we try to play through it and we just aggravate it, sustain this pain and it becomes very difficult, it becomes a nuisance. And then we start to play work around tennis. And by work around tennis, what I mean is that we, we work around the injury. We try to play, but we compromise our movements in order to avoid the pain. So I don't recommend that, of course. What I recommend that you do is get the treatment you need to get the elbow right and then get the technique better so that you don't have a recurrence, okay? Best solution? Icing really helps quite a bit. Anti-inflammatories help quite a bit. Resting, stretching, get some physical therapy. If you have a physical therapist, get out to that physical therapist, start to work on the mobility and the flexibility of the forearm and strengthen this area up. And get that solved so that you don't just keep sustaining the pain of having tennis elbow. So most of us have seen players that are using an armband. And what the armband does is it, it compresses or squeezes the forearm muscles and allows the extensor muscles to elongate a little bit. Enough, hopefully, so that it takes the pressure off where that tendon is attached to the bone or the membrane of the tendon. So it can alleviate or certainly reduce some of the pain. Obviously, it's not the solution that's gonna help you in the long run, but it will enable you to play through somewhat. So the band can help you for that reason, because it elongates the muscle, takes the stress off but it's not, it's just a band-aid. It's not really gonna resolve the problem. Next up, let's talk about technique and how technique plays such an important role in avoiding tennis elbow. If we look at pros, we very rarely see them with a band on their arm or some other kind of apparatus, and yet they hit tens of thousands of balls at a much higher intensity level. And of course, they're more fit and they're stronger, more flexible, 
to play tennis at that level, but they seem to avoid the tennis elbow plague that so many club players get. And that is really rooted in the technique and the technique that's so important that we develop as tennis players and everyone can do it. It doesn't matter how long you've been playing tennis, it doesn't matter how good you are or how, any of those things. You just have to understand a couple of fundamental things to improve your technique and take the stress off the elbow. And we're gonna get into that right here. Tip number one, get your non-dominant hand involved in your tennis game. So often I see club players and I watch them for half hour and they seem like they just hold the racket between points or holding the racket with their playing arm. Then they come up and they play and they, you can tell they're holding it with tension and they're playing with tension and they're walking with tension and they never give this arm a break, ever. So naturally you're gonna to start to strain these muscles and put pressure on those muscles and fatigue those muscles so they're gonna be more vulnerable when you play the ball. Watch high performance players. They're using the non-dominant hand all the time. They put the non-dominant hand in uh, the racket in their non-dominant hand when they're walking between points, looking at their strings, using the non-dominant hand in the ready position, which for many of you who've watched my videos, you know I'm a huge advocate of using the non-dominant hand right from the ready position so it helps lead me into my shots. Right now, I'm holding the racket like a feather. There is absolutely no tension in my arm whatsoever. So, that getting the non-dominant hand involved in, in your game on every shot is going to be a key element to alleviating the pressure on your arm. And especially between shots. When you go back and I go back between shots, it falls right into my left hand again and my right hand's just resting on the handle, ready to go make the next move. And then it comes back again. So this is really never working that hard. It's just having fun. And this one's really supporting the movement that this one needs to make. So build that into your game. And tip number two, and this is a big one, is learning how to get your body into your swings. On virtually every shot, you wanna feel as though you're using the body and the core to generate the power that's behind the swing. So the swing is not isolated or doing work by itself. It is actually being generated and delivered by a core rotation. So specifically what that means, and we'll just break it down to the forehand first, is the purpose for turning initially is so that we can turn back. And when we turn back, the racket's gonna catch up to the core of the body and the power of the swing is really gonna be coming more from the core. And when I come into this, to contact, I'm gonna stall that rotation and the energy of the body rotation is gonna transfer through the hitting shoulder. And there's your power. And if you get the feel of that right, you won't ever feel like you have to use muscles in your arm. Your arm can stay pretty soft and pretty relaxed and you'll let that racket accelerate through the ball. And the same is true, for example, on the two-handed backhand where I get initially get a turn and then I'm going to not play the ball with my arms, but I'm going to initiate the swing by rotating the body into the contact. And then the racket's just gonna come with me and the power is just gonna go right through the left arm, left shoulder on this shot. But again, there's not a lot of tension at this point in time. I've generated the power with my core and my arm is just really a lever that's between the core of my body and the racket. So you don't feel like you're trying to play with your arms. You really feel like you're playing from your core by rotating your core into your shot whenever possible. And the same is true on the serve. If we're trying to serve with just our arm, we are gonna put so much stress on the arm here, on the tennis elbow area, and also on the shoulder. So we don't wanna feel like we're trying to generate power with our arm. We have to feel that the power of the serve really originates in the core. And that's why when you see trophy positions, you see the shoulders that have rotated away from the target and are into an angle. And then when you go to contact, you can see that the shoulders have rotated and the arm is relaxed and going along for the ride. There's really no tension in this area on the serve. And you really got to get that right. So make sure you're using your core. Make sure you're getting these skills technically built. You can look in a mirror at home and look at these and look at them and you can work on, on these skills without the ball. But you want to feel as though the movement of your swing is initiated by the movement of your body first. Thanks so much for watching today's video lesson. And I hope that these concepts will help you either avoid getting tennis elbow or will help you solve a tennis elbow problem if you have one. Please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Leave your comments down below. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future. And also, if you'd like, click on the link in the description down below and gain access to my library of lessons that I teach you the fundamental skills you need to learn on every shot to avoid getting tennis elbow and to optimize your performance as a tennis player. 
Thanks for watching today's lesson, and we'll see you in the next video.